Hey there, friends. Welcome to Just the Gems. I'm Brandon, and you know, we haven't done a review for a while because I play video games and I have thoughts about them, and I feel compelled to share those thoughts with you. The game I want to talk about today is one of my new favorite games. I guess that's a spoiler for the end. I like it. Sorry. And that game is Harvestella. That's right, Harvestella. Really? You might be saying. Are you sure, Brandon? Did you hit your head? No, I certainly did not. Harvestella is one of my new favorite games, and I'm happy to tell you why that is. But first, I have to ask that you please like the video and please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So without further ado, let's get into it. Harvestella is not the sort of game I typically pick up. I tried to connect with Harvest Moon a couple of times over the years, and it just never clicked. Because of that, I never really gave Rune Factory or Story of Seasons a chance. Why would I bother? They're just more farm sims, right? But then Stardew Valley came along, and I caught a ride on the hype train. Choo choo. I still didn't exactly have a strong interest in it, but it was so intensely in the cultural zeitgeist that I decided to see what it was all about. Turns out, either the genre had evolved since the early days of Harvest Moon, or I had. Either way, the gameplay loop had me hooked. There wasn't much of a story to speak of, but the characters were fun, the graphics were charming, and the world was a blast to explore. When I finally put Stardew aside, I figured that was it. This one-off aberration was over and done with. Farm games still weren't for me. I need a story. I need combat. Or at least combat that doesn't feel clunky and bad like Stardew's. Sorry. So I wasn't going to pick up Harvestella. The trailer in the Nintendo Direct where it was announced didn't really do anything for me. It didn't help that it was showing alongside a bunch of other farm sim RPGs. The devs who caught wind of Stardew Valley's success and started working on their own versions were finally getting ready to release their games to the market all at once. That's what it seemed like anyway. Then I caught a tweet claiming that Harvest Stella's music would be composed by Go Sheena. With that, all rational thought fled my brain and I was fully on board. The legendary composer of Tales of Legendia had earned my sale despite how lukewarm I felt about the rest of the game. I picked it up on launch with expectations set at a pretty decently low level. I was here for some good tunes, maybe some fun farming. This wasn't going to be a huge time investment. Dozens and dozens of hours later, I'm happy to report I was very wrong. Harvestella shines because it understands people like me. At least, that's what it feels like. It seems to understand that a fun farming gameplay loop isn't enough to make a game stand out from the various Harvest Moon clones. A game needs to tickle more than one sense to really capture the imagination. So let's talk about those senses. Hearing we've already covered. Go Sheena's score is as masterful as I expected it to be, with soaringly epic compositions alongside thoughtful guitar-led pieces alongside mournful piano dirges, and each one fits the scene perfectly. There's really very little voice acting in the game, and that's something I might have once thought of as a negative. I don't know, I guess maybe I have changed, because to me it feels like a charming throwback to earlier days. I'm not going to talk about the sound effects because they're all perfectly fine, and I'm not a keen enough listener to formulate an informed opinion about sound effects. No offense to sound effects engineers out there, you do important work, but I'm too dumb to be able to articulate how it impacts me. Our sense of sight is well served here too. Now, this is a Nintendo Switch game, so it's not going to blow your mind from a raw polygon perspective. These models could have probably starred in a PS3 game. That doesn't matter though. There's a mastery of visual design at work here, crafting an ethereal atmosphere that makes even a quaint little village feel like it's part of a dream. The four great seas lights you encounter throughout the game, these are these mysterious rocks that control all the seasons. They provide a backdrop that is just pure fantasy. Not fantasy in the George R.R. R. Martin sense, but like in a purer sense of the word. Fantastical really. These things are nuts. The character designs fit well into this sort of world too with a soft style that borrows a bit from Bravely Default and a bit from various other JRPG series. It all melds together into a really pleasing design sensibility that I really enjoy. Okay, I guess I'm leaning into the senses setup that I started for myself, so let's try and keep that up. You can't taste the game. Or uh, you can, I guess, but Switch carts famously taste really terrible. I guess touch would be controls? Yeah, the controls, I guess. These are fine. I don't have much of interest to say about them, except that they work, and when they don't, it's my fault, so I can't blame them. Combat took a bit to get used to for me. I wanted to play it like a faster-paced action game, and it's just not that. 
You eventually do get a dodge button, but it's not very useful. You're going to take damage. Get used to that, right? Get used to bringing plenty of food along on your excursions, and you'll be fine. The combat is fun. It's not super deep, but there is a level of mastery involved to it, and there's a variety of classes that you can change into, so there's enough variety there to keep things interesting. And finally, smell. Okay, this was, I'm realizing, an ill-conceived contrivance. And I'm sorry, I started it. This game does not have a particular smell. All right, leaving all that behind. What about the story? That's the thing that's kept me from enjoying most farm sims, or at least convinced me not to give them a chance. Well, suffice to say, Harvestella was not what I was expecting. If the trailer convinced me to expect a basic fantasy world with a bland main character and not much to do but farm and maybe get married at some point, then the game itself blows that expectation away within the first 10 minutes. We of course start with an amnesiac, default name of Ein. I went with the male protag, and my boy rocks that side pony, look at this king. Look at him. You're in a strange world you don't recognize, and there seems to be no one around except a weird fairy girl. She teaches you how to use the camera. And also she tells you that you, yes you, might just be the one to save the world. Already, despite the sort of cliche intro, I'm getting invested. Because this feels like... like a JRPG. Like an actual JRPG. You wake up the next morning to a doctor named Cress who can't believe you'd be outside during Quietus. Now, you've never heard of Quietus. I mean you, the person watching this video, and you, the character in the game. We've never heard of it because the developers at Square made it up. Your character has never heard of it because they have amnesia. In the game world, Quietus is the gap in time between the seasons. Unlike in our world, where one season transitions into the next, unless you live in Chicago like me and it's winter for six months and then spring for two weeks and then winter again for three more weeks and then summer for a month and then fall for like a hot second and then winter again. <clears throat> anyway, unlike in our world, there is a period of time between seasons called Quietus. Everyone stays inside because those who get caught outside during Quietus are known to catch an illness and die. Please pardon the spoiler, but you do not die. You are special. Soon after, you encounter a mysterious girl in a crashed spaceship? Meteor thing? Reminds me of the meteors they use for transportation in Final Fantasy V. But anyway, this is Arya, and she says she's from the future. The two of you set out to investigate the Seas Lights, those things I mentioned that control the seasons. Something's going wrong with them, and somehow it's all connected to Arya being trapped in your time. Look, bottom line is, I think this story is very cool. It's weird, it's dramatic, it's funny. Your party of characters begins to swell with a huge cast of super likable folks. It's it's a classic JRPG, but also you can farm. I'm not going to say too much about the farming. It's fun. It feels a lot like Stardew Valley, where you raise crops and livestock, sell things via a shipping box each day, expand your farm, make more money, etc., etc. It really is an addictive gameplay loop, but what keeps me going is the story and seeing the characters interact. I could make this a more balanced review, talk about all the various gameplay systems, the cooking, the crafting, the collecting, but I don't want to. All that stuff is good. It's fine. This game is special for other reasons, though. Look, if you're predisposed to want to avoid this game, I don't know if a review like this is going to change your mind. Maybe you cannot stomach yet another JRPG with a silent amnesiac who's destined to save the world. If that's you, God bless you for watching this review for so long. You're one of the good ones. But if any of this has piqued your interest, I highly recommend Harvestella. It's a certified gem, all right, and one I think I'll be coming back to for some time. Well, there you have it. Another certified gem. I really can't say enough good about this game. I was so surprised by how much I love this. Having the lowest of expectations probably helped my opinion of it be so high, but honestly, like, it is just so much fun, so enjoyable, so aesthetically pleasing. Graphics are beautiful, the music is gorgeous, Go Sheena is a genius. It's so great to be playing a game with his music and not some of this Motoi Sakuraba crap. <sighs> Dang it. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Please, I must ask one more time, like the video, please subscribe. If you've made it this far, obviously you're buying what I'm selling. So I really appreciate it if you subscribe, hit the bell so that you know when I upload new videos. And let me know your thoughts on Harvestella below. If you've played it, let me know what you think. If you're planning to play it, let me know, and I will encourage you to do so. Also, if you have any recommendations for games that I should play that you think would be up my alley, let me know. I've got so many games back here that chances are, whatever you recommend, I already own, and I probably haven't played it. So let me know what you think. You all are the best. Thank you so much, and until next time, 